For centuries, the higher education classroom has been dominated by a print culture. What this means is that all too often, students are simply replicants of their professors. Professors teach us things, and we regurgitate them on tests. Now, for a long time before the printing press, this made sense. We didn't have a lot of other options. But things should have changed once we had the ability to spread information by mass-producing print information. But for some reason, we've been stuck in a paradox where even though we're able to print lots and lots of new ideas and spread them very quickly, we're stuck in a print culture where even if our professor is wrong, the textbook is always right. And so all too often, our students aren't being given the skills to critically challenge ideas and to reconceptualize new ones themselves. Instead, they're slaves to what's written in the textbook and they're slaves to a print culture. The Society for Conceptual Logistics and Communication Research is trying to find solutions to these problems. For example, we're working on online tools that allow students to break free of a print culture and express their ideas and locate other ones that might be useful to them. But in particular, we're focusing on a pedagogical technique called conceptual blending. We take the name conceptual blending and the underlying process from linguists such as Faconier and Turner. They propose that we actually think in what they call mental spaces. Mental spaces are these small little packets of concepts and we use them in our local conversation, meaning the conversation we're having at that given moment. We pull in all of these different little packets or mental spaces that provide us with information to think about and talk about whatever the subject might happen to be. Well, what happens is when we get these mental spaces to start overlapping, the combination of these packets creates blended locations. And so when we talk about conceptual blending, what we're talking about is the blending of multiple concepts into a brand new conception or a brand new idea. So we at the Society for Conceptual Logistics and Communication Research are looking for pedagogical techniques that allow for this final step, the blending step, to occur constructively in the classroom. In a conceptual blending exercise, students first pick one concept that you've been covering throughout the course. The student then visualizes this concept, meaning they bring the idea to life in either a drawing or a painting or something electronic. This is where we really let their creativity shine. Then the student picks a second and seemingly unrelated concept from the course. The more disparate the two concepts are, the better the activity is going to go. In the second step, the student again visualizes the concept, bringing it to life in the same format that they chose for the first. The third step though, this is where the magic happens. This is where we use the mental spaces and the blending in order to create new conceptions. We ask the students to blend the first visual and the concept underlying it with the second visual and the second concept underlying it. In this third step, they create a brand new third visual that integrates both of the concepts and shows what would happen when the two of them interact with one another. These interactions can take on really, really interesting results, and the dynamic fusion of multiple concepts results in really interesting blending opportunities for students. So let's take a look at a student doing a conceptual blending in action. First, the student selects a major concept from the class. In this example, the student is taking an organizational communication class. So the first concept the student selects is hierarchy. The student then visualizes this concept using symbolic drawing. Next, the student selects a second concept. For this example, the interpersonal concept of attire or how somebody dresses is selected. Now that we have the two concepts of hierarchy and attire visualized, it's time for the magic. The student visualizes what happens when these two concepts interact with each other. So the student visualizes a hierarchy, but also visualizes the impact that attire has on the hierarchy. So in this example, the man in the suit is at the top, representing probably a CEO. And then his assistant managers are dressed nicely, but not quite as nice. And finally, at the bottom of the hierarchy, we have individuals who are dressed more casually. This may seem like a very simple example. It also may seem like a very simple assignment. In reality, it forces students to engage an important cognitive process, that of conceptual blending. You can imagine how given more time and given more resources, students can create truly interesting and truly dynamic visualizations in conceptual blending. We've used the conceptual blending exercise in class and online 
we've done it individually and in groups. And we found that in all of these settings, it's a powerful tool for having students understand new concepts in a way that learning them in an isolated environment simply doesn't provide. Over the last few years, students have done a wide range of projects. We've had students do hand drawings, we've had students do art projects, we've had students do electronic or even interpretive pieces. Depending on the way your class is set up and depending on the specifications for your particular assignment, I think you'll really find that there's a lot of opportunities for students to simultaneously express their creative side and better learn the concepts themselves. It's all too often that we try to teach individual students individual concepts one at a time. Students often think that because we learned that in chapter one, it's not relevant to chapter two. In reality, it's the connection between chapter one and chapter two that's probably the most useful. And so this is an excellent opportunity to have students creatively and enthusiastically engage the connection between concepts to blend those concepts instead of just regurgitate something they learned once and forget it forever. The Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research is working hard to make projects like conceptual blending easily accessible in the classroom. Our online toolkit provides a large collection of concepts and reconceptualizations and makes them available to students for use in their own projects. We also have a multimedia library where we're trying to collect useful visual explanations of concepts so students can understand them in ways the textbooks don't necessarily describe. And finally, we're developing an open access journal that will solicit and embrace the kinds of multimodal activities and the kind of visual submissions that most traditional journals just can't quite get right. The Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research is excited about the opportunities that multimodal, collaborative, transdisciplinary research brings, not only for knowledge creation, but for learning that knowledge in the classroom.